In this tutorial, I'm going to show you to use and customize the WP Bakery Page Builder post grid and how to display posts in all kinds of different ways. And there's some really cool CSS effects you can apply to your posts as they appear on the page. This is part of the WP Bakery Page Builder playlist. You can check that out in the description down below. There's a link and in the card above. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself for your customers and for your business. If you haven't done so yet and you like WordPress tutorials and tips and tricks, click the subscribe button, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, if you like deals, check out the half off hosting deal I negotiated for you with Inmotion Hosting. Nearly every plan is half off, some are less, but every plan has a discount that you could use for yourself or for your clients or whatever. Feel free to go check that out in the link down below or the card that popped up. And with that out of the way, let's head to this tutorial. To add a post grid, first we have to have a page to add it to. So maybe you have one already you want to add it to. I'm going to create a new page by going to pages and then add new. I'm going to call it post grid testing. I click on save draft. Then I'm going to click on front end editor to edit in the front end. because That's a lot easier out there. Then I'm going to click on add element and I'm going to search for the word grid. Now we see our post grid options, also media grid options. But we have post grid, just regular, and post masonry grid. Now the difference, you can see in the thumbnail. Post grid has equal width and equal height for the entries. Post masonry grid has equal width, but varying height. Other than that, they're basically the same. And we're going to do both of them. So let's do post grid first, the regular one. It's going to add a row with the post grid on the left here and the settings in this little box or that's over top. So here we have some samples that's pulling from the site. These are actually the posts that are on the site right now. You can change the data source. So if you have custom post types, there's a bunch on this site. So you can choose custom post types to be listed here or regular posts, up to you. If you have a lot of posts, you can further narrow down what's displayed by typing in categories, tags, or taxonomies in this field here. You can define how many items to list. The maximum is 1,000. I recommend if you show that many, you would change the display style from show all to either load more button, lazy loading, or pagination. Lazy loading makes it so as you scroll down, things start to load into the page. So they're not all loaded immediately. Because if you do 1,000 all at once, that's going to really slow down the page load. Better to have small numbers. 10 is usually pretty good. And then you have pagination or lazy loading or any of the other two options to have more on further pages. Then you can define how many items per page. 10 is pretty good. Show filter. This will add a filter box. I'm going to save this right now. So we see the filter box that's added, which is right here. And it's defining the categories. And there's a filter tab that was added in here as well, where we can do some settings associated with the filter box that we'll get to in just a second. You can change the number of elements per row. Three are here right now. I think that's a pretty good looking number. You can change it anywhere between one and six, except for five. You can change the gap to any value they have in here. And the gap is the white space that you see between these entries. Initial loading. I like the fade in, but you can choose any one of these. And when you pick one, it's going to animate this button right here instantly. So you can see what that CSS animation looks like. If we do a bounce in up, that's what it looks like right there. You can add an element ID and extra class names for further CSS styling if you want, but that's not required. The data settings tab, you can order it by any one of these things. By default, it's date and then showing the most recent, which is descending. If you use ascending, it's going to be the first post you ever published, which should be hello world on this site. Yes, yeah, so there's Hello World, which was published by WordPress itself when the site was installed. So if you want to do the oldest one first, choose Ascending. Want to do the newest one first, choose Descending. Then you can offset the number of elements so it passes over a bunch, the number that you define here. You can exclude certain pages and posts by entering their title in here. And that's all the settings for the data. The filter, which applies specifically to this, these four words up here, you'll probably have more because it's the categories or in this case, by default, it's the categories. You can choose different options to filter by. I'm going to keep mine on category. I'm going to keep all the categories there. I'm going to change the style from rounded to rounded filled. The default title is all. I'm going to change this to all posts because I also have an all category, so it's a little bit confusing. You can change the alignment, have it center, left or right. I'm going to change the color to green 
and I'm going to make it big so it's very obvious. Then click Save Changes, see what our updates look like. Now we have a more descriptive all posts here. If we click on airplanes, it's just going to show the posts in the airplanes category. And it uses that bounce in up animation that we chose in the general settings. And then back to all posts by clicking all. Item design, this is for the individual item. So the item is this blue placeholder. I don't have any featured images set for these posts. If I did have featured images, they would appear here instead of the blue placeholder. And then the item carries on, it's the title, the excerpt, the button to read more, and the light gray background behind that area. So if we choose these basic grid options, we can have other ones, like the vertical flip. I quite enjoy the vertical flip option. Choose that, save it, and then when you hover over these items, they flip vertically to reveal the data that we just saw below them by default. So if you hover over them, it shows title and excerpt. And you just click on it to read more. There's no button to read more. Go top slide out, not sure what that is. We're gonna see right now what that is. So the image slides up a bit and then we have the title and the excerpt appearing down below. I like that one as well. So go through the basic grid options and choose the one you like. Some of these other ones will work in the post grid style, but a lot of them won't. So to stick to the basic grid, if you're doing the post grid, for the masonry grid, we'll we choose from these ones, which we're gonna do in just a minute. Uh, but for the post grid, just choose from this set right here. Then lastly, we have the CSS design options. These are the same for every element in the WP Bakery page builder. You can set margins, borders, paddings, border styles, and backgrounds. And these apply to the entire element, not just individual posts, but the entire container that these posts are displayed in. And then what we can also do is by clicking that button on the arrow button beside the row, and then click on this hamburger icon, we can change the width where our posts reside. So this changes to two third and one third by clicking on this icon right here. And now we have a narrower area for our posts and we can add more content on the right. I'm gonna actually just drag and drop this over there as well. And it's still honoring our desire to show three, three in one row. Doesn't look very good. But in here, actually I'm gonna change this to half and half. And we're gonna add a masonry grid and we're gonna compare them to see how they're different. That didn't actually work. Let's do half and half. You can put any number of ratios you want in here as long as they equal one. So let's just have half and half here. And over here, I'm gonna click the plus. I'm gonna type grid. I'm gonna put in a masonry grid. So the masonry grid has all the same options, literally the exact same. The only thing that's different is they align differently. I'm gonna set them to be the same options as we have on the right. So we're gonna have a filter, three elements. Gonna fade in on the initial load. Gonna have a load more button with 10. Data settings, date, descending, that's all the same. The filter. I'm going to have rounded filled and all posts for the default title. Center, make it orange so we can tell the two apart. Size, keep that as normal. Not much, not much space over there. Masonry grid, I'm gonna put the, let's do, no, let's do overlay with rotation. That sounds pretty good. Then the design options, we have the same as before. The load more button, because for the post grid, we had lazy load. And for this one, I chose the load, load more button. So there's a couple options here for the load more button. I'm just gonna keep them all as they are. They click on save changes and then watch how this page updates. So the item design isn't quite how I envisioned it, but we have to go back and tweak that a little bit. But the point I'm trying to make here is that the display design for the post grid is very linear, it's very straight lines, equal height, equal width, Whereas for the masonry grid on the left here, we have equal width, but all the elements have different heights depending on how much content there is. The title may be longer, the excerpt may be longer. If there are featured images on here, the featured image could be taller or less tall. And so we have varying heights for each entry, and that is the masonry grid. And those are two ways you can display posts on your site. I'm sure one of those will work for you. And 
something very important to note is all these changes currently live in the browser. They're not actually saved to the page. So when you have something that you like, or maybe you have to take a break and you have to go somewhere, make sure you click on save draft or publish or update, whatever it is you have to push in your situation to make sure you actually save these changes. Otherwise, they're going to be gone and you'll have wasted all that time trying to design this page. As you may or may not know, WP Bakery Page Builder is a paid for plugin that you buy from Code Canyon. You may have received it built into a theme, so you may already own it. If that's the case, I have a course that you might be interested in. It is a complete WP Bakery Page Builder course that shows you how to use all the elements and create awesome pages with it. I can give that to you at a steep discount because you already have this plugin. Just email me at bjorn at wplearninglab.com and let me know and I'll send out a coupon code to you. If you do not have this plugin yet, but you want that course, if you buy the plugin through my affiliate link, which is in the description down below, you can have the course for free. And buying it through that link does not make it more expensive for you. It's just that Invato and WP Bakery, they give me a portion of their sale. So it's no extra cost to you. They just give me a portion of their sale. And in return for doing that, I will give you the course for free. All you have to do is click on the link in the description down below. Make sure you open it in cognito mode or in a different browser or after you clear your cache and cookies. Otherwise, my account may not be credited and then I, I can't tell if you bought it or not. Uh, but when you do buy it, you will get a receipt. Forward that receipt to me at bjorn at wplearninglab.com and then I'll cross-reference your receipt with what is listed as referrals on my account, what's been credited to me as referrals. And if they match up, I will send you free access to that course that you can begin accessing immediately. So that's how easy it is. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the half off for hosting deal in the description down below and possibly in the card that popped up if I had any remaining cards. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.